Hello, brothers and sisters of Hardwell's family. With a clear surprise this again, we got together during our community Sunday gathering to open our hearts and mind and to have the Lord take us to heaven. I was excited, but if I can be honest, anxiety hit me as the enemy pelted me with thoughts of the need to perform or produce something. Then unbelief set in as doubts pelted my mind. Would I be taken there? Would I see something? I was exhausted. But I'm sharing this to reveal to you the enemy's tactics and what he uses to cause discouragement and unbelief in using your sanctified imagination to be with the Lord. The devil hates us more than anything. A soul on earth taken to heaven? First, not only does it boost your morale, lift your mind on heavenly things, and brings healing to your soul, but it causes you to testify, sharing the testimony of where you've been, where the Lord has taken you, thereby bringing many souls who are thirsty to the well of life, Jesus, so they can experience that too. And lastly, letting the world know heaven is real is not a state of being, a made of place, but it is a place that Jesus Christ, our Savior, said he's gone to prepare for you. John 14, 3. If you would believe and have faith in him, that is your home. So I reminded myself of that, putting the demons to flight and just rested in his presence once the music began, whether I saw anything or not. It took me a while to settle in to a comfortable position. And as I began to relax, I saw myself entering a small gated door in a garden. I bent down to enter through the small door. I was being led into this garden by children who were holding my hands to walk. They were very excited. The garden was beautiful with perfectly trimmed green lush bushes, some in squares and others in circles, with tall trim bushes that were like walls surrounding us. The children giggled as we all held hands and went around a particular square bush, singing Ring Around the Rosy. I noticed we all had on white. I was the only adult, and the children were five to nine years of age, about 15 of them. The girls had white dresses with flower crowns and ribbons in the hair. The boys had flower necklaces with white long sleeves and white trousers. I had a white flower summer dress with my hair in a long French braid and flower crown on my head. As we went round and round that bush dancing and singing, I noticed two of the children immediately, Christopher and Annette. Again, these are the two of the three young children I met in my first heavens trip, and have shown up every time I had arrived in heaven, one way or the other. Then the children broke the circle as they began to run through the garden to an area with beautiful willow trees. I followed them running behind them, and we ended at a beautiful decorated table with white lace linens and white chairs with the most beautiful china plates and teacups with blue, pink, yellow, and with gold engravings and designs. One of the kids yelped, A tea party! As they all giggled and clapped excitedly as they all began to be seated. I then noticed Ashley, the last of the three children, who was sitting adjacent from me on the other side of the table. She waved excitedly, then covered her mouth and snickered at seeing me. I waved back as the children began to drink the tea and eat the biscuits that were on the table. Once we were done eating, majority of the children got up and began to run and play in the garden. I had a strong sense the children wanted to talk with me and tell me their story. So Christopher got up from the table, came around and took my hand, leading me away from the table. Ashley and Annette came running on the other side of me, giggling and holding my other hand. As I was led to the most beautiful river in the garden, it was crystal clear, pristine. You could see right through it with beautiful pebbles of all different shapes and sizes at the bottom. It was shallow and had a running stream that sounded almost melodic. We sat on a bench next to the river and Christopher sat to my left and the two young girls, Ashley and Annette sat to my right. As all three children leaned into me, looking up at me and rested their precious heads on my side as I had my arms around them. Christopher is a white young plumpy boy by the age of six with brown hair and the most beautiful eyes you've ever seen. Annette is a very cute spunky black girl about seven years of age with the biggest dimples and smile. <laughs> then Ashley, the shyest of the three, is a white girl with beautiful long golden locks and green eyes 
about the age of seven years as well. I looked at all three as they continued to just stare at me smiling and I said, okay, are we related? <laughs> Think well, Annette is black and the other two are white. Not sure how that can be, but anything is possible in heaven. The children smiled and Christopher responded laughing. Well, we are all children of God. <laughs> I said, yes, very true, smiling. And then he said, we're all connected. Your life on earth has impacted our lives, and that is why we're here. I was amazed thinking, how so? And Christopher, knowing my thoughts, began. My mother aborted me, but after seeing one of your flyers you posted sharing Jesus' message about how wrong abortion was, and how children are a gift from him, she was convicted, cried, and repented. For me, it was too late. But because of your obedience to the Lord to post those flyers, she has since then given her life to Jesus. And I have two other siblings, he jumped up excitedly, that I'll get to meet because of the flyers you posted. She never did that again. I was dumbfounded and remembered the message Jesus gave Mother Claire about abortion. He asked us to spread it around. Then the Holy Spirit gave me the idea to make it a flyer. I added personal testimonies from some people who I knew had experienced that and regretted it. I then went with my sister to pass out the flyers, even posting them on bus stops in our city. This was more than four years ago, and now the Lord in His great mercy was allowing me to see how it impacted eternity. Then Ashley began, I was killed by a drunk driver you prayed for at Walmart. I thought, wow, there were many times I would take some friends from my Bible study group and would evangelize in Walmart and different grocery stores just praying for people. I was a bit sad because I thought if I prayed for him and he still harmed somebody, I couldn't see the blessing in that. Actually, no, my thoughts said, because of your prayers, he didn't go to hell. He was destined to go there that day. But the Lord in his great mercy sent you to pray for him. So rather than being killed in the car accident, he was kept alive. Now he's in prison, but Papa will redeem him and he'll be used to bring many souls to heaven. I was with my mom when the accident happened. She made it through and has now forgiven the man. She said all of this with such excitement. It's like the souls in heaven have no concept of anything else besides the glory of God. She was so excited that God's glory be shown in all of what he allowed in her life. I was in awe, amazed at God, still processing all of this, when Annette stood up off the bench and came in front of me and said, I love you most of all with tears in her eyes. Christopher and Ashley both said, Ah, Annette, waving her off smiling. She began, You came to me when I was dying. Now, that I didn't remember. And would have remembered if that happened on earth. I looked a bit perplexed. She continued, You told me to let go and that everything was going to be okay. And that I was going to be with Jesus and my family would be fine. I really tried to remember then I saw myself praying in my closet in tongues in my old apartment. I was praying in the spirit, and during those moments, I didn't know what I was saying or doing at the time. He then opened my eyes to show me what was being done that day as I was praying. He took me in the spirit, and I saw myself walking to a hospital room. I saw Annette sick, with tubes all through her nose and body. The light in her eyes were gone, and she didn't have that big smile like she does in heaven. She looked so tired. I then told that it was okay to let go and that she was gonna be with Jesus. Tears streamed down her eyes and then I saw her spirit sit up from the bed. A bright light appeared in her room and Jesus walked in, picked her up and carried her away smiling at me. I then was back in my apartment just praying in tongues, having no idea what just happened or what I was praying. She then said, and you helped my family prepare to let me go by praying for them. This time I thought, how? Then Holy Spirit again brought to my memory of me at Cook's Children's Hospital with my niece Naomi. She was two years old at the time, a little partner in holy crime. <laughs> Naomi's sister had a doctor's appointment, and the Lord told me to go in and pray for everyone on the floor. So I was nervous and took Naomi. I remember meeting a black family, and I prayed with them. Not sure what I prayed, but as the vision was going and they chimed in, that was my family. And your prayers for them brought them many graces in preparation for my passing. 
And then she said, we love Naomi. Christopher and actually both excitedly repeated, yes, we love Naomi. We're praying for her. I laughed in amazement <laughs> and in all the goodness of God. And of these three precious children, the Lord allowed me to touch. And now they're blessing me.